share the agenda. Everybody should be able to now see the agenda uh, up, up, up on the screen. Um, Nick, I don't know whether you, you're the you're the chair. Um, I don't know if you'd like to just wait another minute or two before Jay joins us, or if you'd want to um, kind of just proceed uh, to like kind of call the meeting to order. Um, but uh, you know, your choice on on how you want. Yeah, to. Um, I'm okay. I think everybody, if uh, if everyone else is okay to wait for a minute, we can. Um, what what are your thoughts there? Let him drift in, or do, should we go ahead and at least call the meeting to order? Or what do you want? I, I'll defer to the chair. <laughs> I'm worried, you know, salt, so county and city solid waste are kind of, or the county is your staff agency, basically. So um, your choice. Um, I didn't get any kind of email from Jay saying he was not going to, that he was going to have any problems or anything, but, um, but you do have a quorum. So okay. I don't know, you want to, I guess we could wait another two minutes or something and just. <clears throat> well, or, or I guess uh, if if the other board members feel like it's okay too, if, if it's easier to, we could call it to order. And then um, typically we'd, we'd go through and, and ask to suspend the um, Roberts rules of procedure too. Yeah. We could get that out of the way if everyone's okay with it. Sure. sure. Okay. Um, yeah, well, we've got a quorum, so I'll call the meeting to order. Do, uh, do we want to do the roll call? Um, we have been, Zach, back here, uh, I can, I can list off the, let me see if I can do it. So we'll, we'll do a, uh, roll call real quickly. Uh, so it'll be the five board members are Kim, uh, Chair, Chair Nick Jackson, you here, <laughs> uh, Kim Davis. Here. Catherine Wilt. Here. Um, David Collins. He's still, he's still not here. And Jay Price. Okay. Um, so that's four out of, wait, three out of five. Um, yes. So, okay. And then the other people are in attendance. I can just list, uh, <clears throat> try to get back to this uh, participant. Let's see that participant list. So we have, in addition to that, we have some folks from IT, Jacob and Rob from IT, um, patients with the city of Knoxville. Ronnie Neese will be coming on board at the end of the month and replace, replacing David Collins. Actually, David Collins and Jay Price, it looks like they both have joined the meeting now. Okay, perfect. So I'm, at least I'm showing that on my participant list. <clears throat> um, so... Hey, David and Jay, you should be able to respond if you unmute yourself and you can share your video if you if that's applicable. Um, there we're in the middle of a roll call. So, David, are you there? David Collins? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I just now got in the in the meeting. And Jay Price, are you there? Yes, I am. All right, so that's full attendance. And again, I mentioned Ronnie Neese is also there uh, um, as he will be replacing David uh, at the end of the month. Um, and then here in our office is uh, Drew Thurman, it's me, Zach Johnson, the Community Center Operations Manager. We have our tire program coordinator, Dave Shelton and um, uh, Jim Snowden. So uh, bear in mind, we are being recorded and um, this is maybe even being streamed live at the moment. So, um, okay, so that should take care of that. Okay. Hi, uh, David and Jay. Good to see you guys and everybody. Healthy. It's been a while. Yeah. Nice to see everyone's faces on screen, if not in person. Uh, and I guess if we've got we've got a full quorum, then officially, uh, do we do we need to make a motion to uh, suspend the the more formal rules of order? I'll so move. I'll, I'll second. second. So that's Pat. Who <laughs> moved? I'm battling for that one. Who moved? Who made the motion? D Dave can motion and I'll second it. So David Collins made the motion. Cat will second. I'm calling, I'll be calling those out so Zach can capture that. <clears throat> okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 
Okay. All right, motion passed. So um, I didn't get any to the next order of business. I didn't get any comments. I don't know, um, you, you know, you could, from the minutes, uh, no one ever replied back and said, hey, I want you to make a change. So uh, let me, I'll pull those up if you give me just a second. Um, uh, minutes for approval. So these were the minutes from the June board meeting, which it got, you know, it got postponed from what have been March. It was not till June, but uh, I didn't know if there was anyone had any, took any issue. Any? No, they looked, they looked fine to me. Okay. Me too. Yeah, yeah they look fine to me as well. <clears throat> All me right. too. Well, um, I know we're kind of in informal, but if, if we would get just, just for the sake of, for our next few minutes, uh, get an actual motion and a second for that. Awesome. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the meeting last March. I'll second that. So David second, Kat making the motion and David calling second it. <clears throat> so we have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. So that takes care of old business. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I did mention this already just because for the practice of Zoom, but uh, David, I, I have a, a letter that I'll probably be sending that says thanking you for your service. Um, and, uh, you know, just another update is Nick, Nick is signed on for a second six year term and that should be effective. Uh, like on Monday, the commission will vote on that. Um, it's, it's set to be on the consent agenda, as well as Ronnie Neese, who works at the health department, is going to be re Placing David, for, uh, so he'll be starting his first first term. Um, I uh, again, I also want to thank Ronnie for agreeing to serve. Um, Ronnie, would you want to? I don't know. Give a a, a, a very brief introduction uh, about your background. I know you've been working in environmental health for a long time over at the health department, but. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot either. We can always deal with that. That, that will be fine. No, I've been at the health department for over 30 years. Uh, I'm going to be retiring from here in May. Uh, it's time that I go home. Uh, I've, uh, I have an ag background. I graduated from UT with a master's degree in, in agriculture. And I've worked for the co-op system for several years before I came to the health department. I've been a food inspector, uh, did groundwater work. Uh, we're uh, doing septic systems uh, as assistant director and, um, and been director for 15 or 16 years now. Worked uh, extensively in the vector program and worked with uh, Drew and some others in uh, solid waste of getting a lot of tires removed, hopefully, and uh, finding that and worked real close with stormwater uh, uh, through the years on trying to resolve some different issues. So. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to serve and I hope I can be some benefit somewhere along the way. Thank you, Ronnie. I, I did bring up that later on the agenda, we can talk about the role if we need to, but you know, because you're, it's kind of in the process of being appointed. Um, it's likely that you would not be called upon to, to meet again until maybe this time next year, unless, um, unless we have a, um, a reason to convene the board. The board only naturally convenes yearly for this annual reporting. But um, but so if we were to have to get everybody together come April or further, you would be you know a voting member of, of the board. So that'll, um, that'll be fine, no problem. And and I, and I thought under the municipal update or under the new board later in the uh, new board and determination of the new chair, if applicable, um, that could be where we could kind of talk about. It, it, anything that would be related to the role if you all had any questions. Um, okay. So, um, David, did you want to say anything? I, I, I didn't want to skip over you. I, I, again, I did want to thank you for your service to the, to the, to the county and to the board. And, uh, yeah. Um, well, thanks, Drew. It's, it's been a, it's been a, a fun uh, term of membership. Um, the reason I'm, I decided not to, 
to seek another term is uh, I've recently retired. And, and so just trying to slow things down and, and let other people be involved in uh, uh, government affairs and those sorts of things. And so, but I've enjoyed it uh, immensely in getting to know the, the board members and, and learn more about uh, what solid waste does. And uh, I think just hearing Ronnie's background, he will be an outstanding uh, member of, of this board. He's got a, a whole lot more uh, innate understanding of, of what Solid Waste Department does than, than I ever did. And so I think, Ronnie, I think you'll do a great job in, in giving guidance to the board. Of course, they don't need a lot of help. They, they do a great job over there. Um, but uh, again, I've, I've enjoyed my service and, uh, and uh, look forward to uh, watching you guys in the future. So Thank you again for your service. Um, keeping with the um, kind of informal thing, I, I, I you know, um, Robert's rules, even though we've kind of suspended, you've suspended them, it does typically call you to make the motion first and then second and before you discuss anything. And, um, I do have a mo I don't know if you can see it, but I have like a sample motion there that would be good. Um, and if you, you get that motion made and seconded, we'd be able we could discuss the, the planning document if, if, when you all wanted to to do that. But that makes sense. Yep. Do we have a motion? Uh, this is this is Catherine. I'll uh, motion to authorize the regional solid waste board chair to sign off on the annual reporting as reported in retract. I'll, I'll second that motion. So Kat made the motion and David Collins seconded. Okay, um, now we'll, we can discuss it. So um, I will screen share the plan, which um, let me know if y'all have any problems. I, uh, I don't wanna, Take up your time is uh, valuable. I um, I don't want to like go over too much with it, but you know, just to remind you all that this is this is a word document that represents something that we do um, that we actually report uh, in the retract system, and so I, I'm actually quite proud of the way the document looks. Um, and there's no way to export what is done. I'll I'll switch over right quick to what it looks like in retract, just to give you an example of that. Um, so even something, it's like there's all these little modules, which is kind of how we've broken it up in the document. But an example of that would be like, we would click on and it would say like, who's the author? And we have to put all this information in and like list the board members. And it's a lot of boxes and check boxes. And um, so we've, you know, we've turned that into, um, something that's, I think, a lot more pretty. <laughs> but there is a little bit of a loss of fidelity on that. But so so that would, you know, um, that would give us something that's more like, like this, like for contact information. Um, and um, everything in here is something that is in some form or fashion reported to into Retract, uh, which is that online software system. I will some very quick things about what's kind of different or what to look for. And you can ask any questions about this, but I'll just run down them. Is that it, it's, it's, a, it's got a new look, which is consistent with the new county logo. They uh, kind of adopted a little over a year ago. So all the font colors and all that are consistent with that. Um, and then there's a couple issues where like, this thing is always, some of it is looking at the present. Some of it, this whole reporting is some of it's looking back and some of it's looking forward. And an example of that is like the board members. Um, it's like, this will be something that is referenced throughout the year. And so I did actually go ahead and put Ronnie Neese in there because basically this thing will hopefully be signed off before the end of March, but it's possible it, it won't even be finalized until early April. So, I went ahead and put in Ronnie Neese because I, I found it'd be, it'd be better to be accurate in the present or in the future. Uh, and the only thing that they really want to know looking back that they want 
to focus on, ag focus on accuracy is, is like the quantitative data, like the waste or recycling statistics. So that's anywhere there's a question as well, do I answer about now or do I answer about in the future or do I answer looking backwards? I, I typically look at what is gonna be, you know, after this is approved, what is most correct? So that's an example of uh, where on even on the contact page, it's something that's not actually happened is listed as um, something that's new. Um, another thing about it, it would be a, um, is there's it does ask us uh, about if there's like things we want to change or update to the plan. And for the past several years, we've kind of kept this emergency debris. That would be page page. Um, page three, I was like, what do you, you know, you want to make an update? I basically just update the, nothing really changes about that, but I update the memo and change like the, the year, the date of the year. Um, so that will probably going forward always be something that's selected as a, as an update, but it's not really a substantive change. So um, just wanted to point that out that even though it says it's being changed, it's not. Um, other things that are more timely, like on page nine of the document, we um, try to get down there. We uh, they it ask us some stuff about our budget, and so the the new budget coming that's going to be is not even been presented for next year. So I always just upload whatever the current budget is. So. Uh, in the retract, I would have uploaded the actual adopted budget for fiscal year 2021, even though right now they're working on fiscal year 2022. So that's a that's a thing where I'm uploading something that's more present as opposed to something that's future, but it doesn't really change. Our budget does not really change much from one year to another. So there's another example of something that's, it's, whether it's going forward or backward. Um, pages 10 through 13, um, they do every year ask us these survey questions. And I actually made it a point not to look at my responses from the previous year because every year I might have a different thought. Um, and so I didn't look at what I answered last year or how we answered, I just answered them. Uh, and then these, I, I take these as being questions from the county. I don't know, you know, I don't, I feel like the city could have just as easily, if patients wanted to add something there, she, she could have answered it with respect to the city. So I, in a way, I would say your oversight on this, I just wanted to make sure you all were not completely, uh, that you didn't have any heartburn about anything that I would have put in there, because we I could always change it. But these are just, in, in my opinion, these two deck survey questions are to the, not to the county government or the city government, not to the board, but you are still signing off on the retract process. So I thought it would be good to, to at least have you see my full responses to those. Um, page 13. Um, as I mentioned on an email that uh, they just issued actually yesterday or two days ago, they issued a, an automatic extension for every county uh, until the end of May. I think that even TDEC is actually having problems getting some of this data together. So it's not actually due for another month. And these yellow highlights show where they um, the number is maybe not finalized. I got them to give me a ballpark so I could at least plug it into some of our charts. Uh, but for example, one of the landfills, uh, like as a Rutherford County has a demolition landfill, that number could have some something entered there or it could remain zero. Um, and um, uh, page 14, another, as of this morning, I was gonna, I had a note on here to say that these are TDIC can send us updates and I got one at 9 a.m. that said, here's the numbers for all, all of Kroger's in Tennessee. So we're gonna add one, one line to this uh, for Kroger, for example. So it's still coming in and I'm, I'm hesitant to lock it, but I can't imagine that Kroger's numbers will be, for the, for the Knox County specific numbers, will be enough to move the percentage point. Uh, at some point we will lock and let them add it if they wanted to change it. But, um, but I guess what I'd say is, there are some still are still numbers of uh, quantitative numbers from last year that are coming in, especially these things where um, the, where TDEC gets the information. And I got an email about an hour ago that said that they were there are some folks in the industry that had asked to remain anonymous, and they're going to be entering numbers as an anonymous record that I won't even have. I'm not even entering it in. TDEC will be entering it in, and I won't even know who it is. 
So these these numbers are kind of fuzzy. They they can change, and TDEC knows it, and um, so just that's that's the kind of thing that could change between now and when the board chair would sign off on it. And actually, it could also change after we've submitted it this summer when they review it for quality control. They could change any of these numbers if they felt like it'd be more accurate to to change something one way or another. Um, and again, all these numbers um, that are in here that are that are highlighted are are subject to change because they're based on um, kind of estimates that for the TDEC has given me before they finalize it. Um, page 15 is something worth noting that um, you see where there's like class one, class three, four, and then all recycling. The, the thing that we're actually judged, the region or the county is judged on is how much that's not going into a class one landfill. So all the C and D stuff and all the recycling, they kind of lump that all together as not going into three, four landfill. So we're supposed to have either a 25% real time diversion rate or a 25% improvement from what it was in 1995. Uh, and we always crush that from a county perspective. So if you look up there, it's, it's like 30, it's like 54%. Uh, that's what we're judged on. That should be 25 or higher. And uh, every year we get a, a letter, which uh, normally comes in the summer. Um, but I will show you what that letter looks like real quick. Hey, Drew. Yes. I had a question. This is Jay Price. So yeah. I noticed on the, the recycling, <laughs> program, um, the, the top organization was Harrison Construction, which doesn't surprise me because of the amount of concrete and asphalt recycling that they do um but another company that does that that i didn't see on the list and maybe i just missed it um is duracap paving um and I, I i don't know if they're in the county maybe they're not that they're, they're kind of a ways out there um that, it, it just came to mind because I, I know we've taken both concrete and asphalt out to them and it, they do have weight scales and other things like that so um wasn't sure if that do you have a right. contact you could send me later uh, any type of yeah i do and, uh, they they go their recycling arm goes by construction products recycling llc actually so um but it's duracap paving same company so yeah i can i can send you that uh, just later on send me the construction products recycling llc correct yeah we'll we'll seek out and ask them you know a lot of this stuff there's a, um, uh, there's a uh, one year where we didn't get numbers from Harrison and if they don't give them to them, it's like, we're so far above that limit, that 54%, that 25% that we don't actually spend a whole lot of effort seeking that out because we already meet the compliance. And, um, you know, um, I, I always want to get as many of those as you can. And my, my view uh, is, if there's going to be less than a thousand tons, maybe it's not worth it. Anything a thousand tons or higher is, 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 is worth going after. But you'll even see in that previous chart that we have some that like two tons. Um, so um, I'll, I'll go back to that in just one second. This is, this is the thing that comes at the end of the year. This was last year's. But it, if you'll see, based on the information submitted, the, uh, the report, uh, you know, there's a Actually, this may have not been last year, it may have been two years ago. But this is an example of what the letter looks like that we get. It says, they say achieved. It doesn't say acceptance because again, the way the law is written, it's about whether the region is achieving this reduction or diversion targets that are set by the state of Tennessee, the Solid Waste Management Act of 1991. So we always achieve that. Um, but this is basically them saying we've accepted your report. Um, so, uh, just wanted to let you know, that is something we get back and then we kind of put that together and then drop it in. Uh, and again, that may have been a two year old one, but I, I wanted to just show you an example of what it looked like. So let me go back to the plan. Um, Drew, I, I did have one comment on page 15 since you were kind of there. Let me, uh, let me go back to that page right quick. Okay. It's yes. Yeah. I, I think it would be helpful to make sure that um, somewhere on in the numbers or something that we're clarifying that the numbers represent tonnage. Um, oh. 
we have that on all the other pages and it's missing here. And in totality, you know, the, looking at the total document, I think you're, you, you can infer it, but I think if someone was to take this page and export it or whatever and, and have it standing alone, I think just noting that these numbers are in, are tons of, of waste that have been taken care of would be helpful. Yes, and I would say uh, just to put you a little bit at ease is these are something that I've generated in Excel based on the things that we're reporting. And I, I did intend to kind of put a paragraph here, you know, like some kind of some note <laughs> about uh -huh. that. Um, I just didn't have a chance to do that. And that, because this is not the actual thing that's getting reported, I always kind of give myself a little more time to make this a little more polished. But um, yes, I think that's great. That's a great point. It, we do need to have those units of measure uh, in there. Uh, even if it's just a note that says a, above, you know, as reported in time. Yeah, just somewhere somewhere on that on that page of that document. I think. And, and, and it might be like, for example, on page 15, this, this pie chart, I might actually go in and actually redo that to where I put in how many tons it is of each it all I'll like what they call like data labels and we might i might i might change that i just i had like a few hours on monday to get this i wanted to get this in some form to you all um and i was really waiting on tdec to finalize those numbers but i had to call them and say please just give me some ballparks so i can get this to you all because otherwise this, this whole section would have been blank but um yeah going to what what jay had said um is yes, yeah, so Harrison is quite <laughs> quite large uh, on the tonnage, uh, and I imagine if we get this Duracap paving construction uh, products recycling LLC in there, um, they might they might live up there in the top in the you know five digit or higher numbers, the, the ten thousand or greater. But there is a clear breakdown. There's like ten digit uh, five, you know. Uh, 10,000 or greater between 10,000 and 1,000 and kind of this, uh, like it looks like between Home Depot and Valley Protein where you get a thousand or less. And um, to maybe make this a little more muddied, I do also, um, I, I do also do a thing where we, let me get something here. Um, trying to pull up an Excel spreadsheet for you. Um, In order to not double count, this is something that when we first started doing this in Retrack years ago, we talked about like, well, so like Knox County and the city of Knoxville, we, we you know, we're taking stuff to West Rock, but you know, we're getting West Rock or PSC's numbers. So we, um, we started uh, backing out those numbers and I'm, I'm about to bring this up. Um, let me find it in here. Um, we started backing those numbers out. Are you all seeing an Excel spreadsheet now? Okay, yeah. so for example of that, and this is, they really only care about the total tons for the region. And so because of that, we just try to like back out num numbers that we're sure of or kind of sure are. So we might take like what like was initially reported by PSC or West Rock. And then we might take Knox County, City of Knoxville and UT and just back those out. So then are we have an actual adjustment after an adjustment, that's what we actually enter for PSC. So there is a little bit of inaccuracies if you're looking at um, this chart um, I have a here where we back those out or we back that out like the, the living earth that might say 32,670, that does not include the the amount that the city of Knoxville, the, the city of Knoxville's numbers would be down here under 30, you know, down in the government, 39,000 there for the city of Knoxville, a large portion of that is actually living earth that we've kind of kept separate. Someone, someone was wanting to say something? Is that patience or? Patience, you're muted, we can't hear you. Sorry about that, my dog is barking. Um, yeah, I had a question about something similar. Um, Jay, I see your numbers for UT, 13,000 tons, very impressive number. Um, is that 
in addition to what you take to West Rock or what, what is that exactly? Um, I didn't, I was going to bring that up separately perhaps because that looks like it's off by about a factor of eight, maybe seven. Okay. Yeah. Way higher than it should I was be. Like, I was like, wow, Jay, you're doing half as much. No, you're doing twice as much recycling as the entire city of Knoxville. So yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, actual, or, when I say recycling, I'm not counting our brush, which is, you know, pumping up our number, but our just straight recycling is, you know, just a little over 7,000 tons. So yeah, so, it's what, probably a factor of 10 off of just uh -huh. recycling, but composting and recycling together, that's, it's probably, you know, seven or eight times higher than it should be. Okay. So, cause, um, so you say there's about 10,000 that's, that's off if you're just talking like scrap metal paper cardboard etc recycling yeah we're if i recall roughly two thousand tons something like that okay well i'm looking at something i, I see there okay. may be a spot where we've messed up i see that there was a nine thousand six hundred nine thousand three hundred sixty pounds of tires that may have been entered as tons so um that would make that, sense. that may have been that may have counted for that change and and, and oh, this is why we i haven't really had a chance to like do any major quality control on these so i'm glad you pointed that out i'm, gonna, I'm making a note right now so ut uh numbers check um and let's see i can pull that up right quick um in that spreadsheet that might help to see where i've done that Okay. Did those look ballpark right? These tonnages like 85, 275, 250, 96. Yeah, it's been, it's, given COVID, it, it was down a fair okay. amount. So, yeah. And that, that may have, then that may be the tire number. I might have messed up on that. So, that could be, well, well I'll, 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 I'm going to double check the note. I'm going to put a QC check on that. Also, there's another group of people that review these uh, after me as the, as the state. If, if yours is varies much from one year to another, they also call me about it. So there's a couple people, there's a couple more processes before we sign off on this to, to double, to double check or anything. But I'm, thank you for catching that. Um, let's see. The, I think that's that is, if there's any other questions uh, or comments, um, I, I just wanted to run down that was, basically what all, everything I had I, I listed is what I wanted to point out to you all. So, um, um, is that, can you go back to that one? That was actually the question I was going to ask is how that compared to last year. I was just curious about tonnage in general, but also, uh, you know, recycling stream. I know a lot of people, a lot of projects went on a lot of if everyone's like myself. I did quite a bit of home improvement as well, but it, uh, I suspect that that might have been uh, a common theme too. Well, um, so I don't have the, I don't have, um, you know, this is land, this, this chart here is what is this graphic down here. Um, okay. So I don't know if, I don't know how it's showing up, but uh, there's the chart. Sometimes people want to see the chart. Some people want to see the, the graph, the, the, the graph, but it does appear that our total waste has gone up. So even if that, like we talk about, like my, I got UT 10,000 pounds wrong or 10,000 tons wrong, that shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things. That should not even be a rounding error. Uh, but if you look at it, like it's not the most, it, it does look like it's the most, but if you look at just land, uh, landfill by year, you know, 2008, and then we it was 800,000 and then it was down to seven, six, seven, uh, back up to 800,000, uh, total waste. Um, if, if you look at this graph, I don't, I don't know if you're, you're seeing it, like I've seen it, but, um, the bottom darker part is like the, 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 the trash and the total is the trash and the like kind of diversion. Um, um, it, it's, it's still relatively steady. If you think about it, you know, um, 
from a 10 year period or a 12 year period, we've gone from a lot. There was a dip there right after 08, um, from 08 to 2011, it kind of dipped in during that great recession. But then yeah. we kind of went generally flatline, slightly <laughs> trending up on both on, on all things. So yeah, it's interesting because it, it you can see it pretty clearly from the housing crisis crash. Uh, things take a dip, and, and we've we've had a pretty good uptick this last year too. But yeah, okay. I, 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 was, I was just curious. I mean, it's what ten percent maybe from last year. It looks like. Um, I did do a percent here. change. I did a, uh, didn't do a percent change, which may be a worthwhile thing to add in that. Let me see that. That's page page 16. Page 16. We make it do a percent change of total. Uh, see if I can add that as a column. Um, but, uh, you know, I would say f at least related from year to year, it doesn't seem to be like there, it doesn't waste numbers aren't going dramatically up or dramatically down. I mean, they are really reflective of the economy. So it's, you know, kind of, it should follow that slow growth, you know, inflation based, um, kind of two, 2% per year. Um, if you ask the waste companies or the city and county, we can get to this later in the municipal update. We definitely experienced a lot of changes. We had a lot more trash coming in our residential collection. But I think total amount of the landfill people still generated a similar amount of waste. It's just like maybe the patients' curbside system and the convenience centers were utilized more. Where if you think about it, people right now who are still working from home are taking takeout. Instead of throwing that trash out at like a McDonald's or a Wendy's, they're throwing it home in the residential side. So it's still getting thrown away. It's still waste. Uh, but we've definitely felt a, a major change in the residential collection. Um, but I don't, I don't think there's been a whole lot of that uh, changes on the total waste picture with the exception of perhaps the stimulus money. Um, maybe they want to call it stimulus. These checks that folks are getting, they're buy, if they're buying things that are new, that might be, you know, if people are, they're choosing to upgrade their house or change their bathroom, that could surge the, that could cause the, the demolition portion of this to go up. Um, so um, I could see a, you know, an increase in, in waste going to demolition landfill if, if more people are doing like home improvement type stuff. But if, if, it's, if it's just offsetting a loss of income, you know, you get a $1,300 check or a $1,200 check or a $600 check, and that's just replacing income, then it, in theory, it wouldn't change it, you know, it wouldn't change the total waste. But maybe a year or two from now, if we see a spike up, in either demolition or just total trash, we could we could see that that was the the great lockdown or the COVID kind of bumped us up on, in all categories, or maybe it ups us in demolition or downs it does down in demolition but up in the in the class one. We might be able to see that a year or two from now, a, a kind of a, 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 a slight spike here or there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a spike, but I think we're seeing that latter trend that you just said, right? Um, if you look at the class three, four compared to the class one, th that's a different, and, but it's trending that direction now, like more class one and less class three, four, if you look at it, um, that's the lowest percentage it's been of percent class three, four on that chart, right? So, so it, it, it's actually starting to trend that way. And if you think about home construction, which is where I would guess most of the class three, four, I wouldn't think it would be Nick at his house, you know, refinishing his deck or, you know, doing, redoing his bathroom. I wouldn't think that that'd be the, the bulk of the waste to class three, four landfill. It'd be like construction companies doing waste to class three, four landfill, I would think. So, okay. Yeah, I think you're right on that. You know, if there's just more construction, there's going to be more construction demolition stuff, but um, these might get offset because these are numbers from the landfill. If, you know, if Duracap is more active and Harrison's more active, those numbers won't be shown, even though there's maybe more activity, that'll be shown as recycling as opposed to, you know, or diversion, uh, like kind of a true diversion, not diversion into a class three or four landfill, but diversion into something else. Um, 
So it might actually not show up. It's, it's, it's real weird when you're looking at waste numbers. Um, uh, so it, it could be that some of this lower percentage is because Harrison has kind of stepped up their game in the, in the construction demolition, which, you know, that's not for us. They're, they're doing that. I assume that they're either because it's a better business model for themselves or their whoever their clients are, are asking them to, to do stuff to, to recycle that. Yeah. I mean, just looking at the straight past one numbers, that's like a just rough off the back of my head, 13, 14% increase from last year in class one um, from 505,000 tons to 581,000 tons. It's so like 76,000 tons difference. So that's, you know, that's not an insignificant jump in my mind. That's, you know, that's actually maybe even more than 15% jump. Um, and then there's a slight downtick in class three, four. So I, I would argue that you are seeing an uptick in class one landfill waste. Which is odd because what I heard from the landfill operators was that commercial waste at, at the class one was way down. Um, and then that residential waste was way up. But in my mind, there's a lot more commercial than residential waste, but I'm not sure how, how what explains it, but that's what they were telling me. Yeah, it's interesting, because I, I noticed the class one was the one I focused on when he went over that same thing. Interesting. Yeah. It's definitely, you know, it's definitely interesting. Um, I'm really glad we have this data going back all these years. Um, and um, it's, uh, it's, it's, I, retract, I don't know if actually keeps it that long. So if you were to go into the retract system right now, you'd kind of only see the past three or four years of entries. These are from all the years that I've been working at solid waste. I started in 2008. So I've, I've just kind of, if you're going to, if you're going to report it from year to year, we just kind of kept it in the Excel spreadsheet, to keep that trend going. So um, uh, it's interesting that these numbers are actually from the landfills reported to TDEC. So I actually, I go into retract after TDEC officials enter the landfill numbers. Uh, and I, I kind of pull them from there. So I'll, I'll, sh I can show you what that, what that looks like in the retract system. Um, can, um, can I just interject one more comment? So yeah, like, patients, you, you mentioned residential versus commercial but residential versus commercial is not class one versus class three, four. I just wanted to be clear on that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, what I mean is of the waste going to the class one, class one waste, some of that is residential and some of it is commercial. And the class one, specifically Chestnut Ridge, they were telling me that their commercial waste to class one was, um, you know, so far down that um, that they were they were wanting to close on Saturdays, but then the residential waste was so far up. So I pulled up retract. This is what it looks like when they enter it in, and um, you know, it's kind of a draw. I, I, it's locked for me. I'm not even allowed to touch it. So this is what they've entered for, like Volunteer Regional, Loudoun County, Ray County. If you'll notice. Actually, the the thing that's missing is the is the one that I I was highlighted. I had to I had to call them and ask them on the one in Athens, Tennessee, and the one and, and Chestnut Ridge, and they gave me their verbally. They gave me what the ballpark was, um, and they they kind of track it whether it's out of state. I guess some counties who are on the border might send some of their waste to you know Alabama or Kentucky or something. Mm -hmm. uh, or other landfills and you can see that they've made those so added all class one except the chestnut ridge meadow branch down here in the comments section um these are like uh the, the people who have created and or updated it and i'm still waiting for them to put their finals in so i could adjust my charts but they they basically enter this and so i'm actually taking their data and putting it into this report because i think it's valid or um, it's good for us to have it and keep a record of it um, and it's really actually hard for us to, to, to spit this out. Um, like when you go to export, it, it wants to just, ex it, it, it basically wants to export these as a comma, kind of a comma separated values Excel file for the past two or three years. 
uh, it doesn't go back as far as 2008. So um, again, that's 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 what that looks like. And, uh, <clears throat> any more questions, observations? Um, I just had one other, I'm just curious, this, this doesn't uh, pertain to the numbers uh, per se, but uh, you know, a, a while back uh, uh, you'd mentioned the, uh, I guess they made a change at the state level with the law that uh, you guys no longer uh, got, got the assistance for um, roadside trash pickup, you know, due to uh, uh, changes with the DUI law and whatnot if I recall correctly, but um, is, is any any change or progress been made there to give you more, you know, um, um, manpower and, you know, needed uh, yeah. resources there for, for the city and the county uh, to be able to, uh, to collect that? Yeah, so um, that would be what you're referencing is back in like 2014, 2015, they changed the criminal law, the code of the criminal law to ch from there being, if you got uh, committed a DUI and were either pled guilty or were sentenced guilty, you were used to be required to do uh, 24 hours or three days, three eight hour days, uh, picking up litter on the side of the road. They changed that to be 24 hours of jail time. And at the time when that happened, we had uh, our litter crew folks, there was, their, their, their model was we had people who were, their job was to take out probationers. And so we were just kind of always having probationers come in every morning. However many probationers had is how many roads we would picked up. If we had 10, we did a big road. If we had two, we did a small road. Um, that, when that changed, we really, um, well, we tried to get it reversed and that just seemed like a, a dead end course. So what we eventually did was just hired people and switched from a probationary, a relying on probationary uh, labor to more relying on staff and then hoping that some probationers augment that. And um, we actually were doing really good uh, getting judges and um, prosecutors to kind of include anybody in Knox County that was to committed any kind of nonviolent crime and uh, that they would be, community service was part of their sentence. Uh, that was also a case for anybody that maybe had problems uh, paying off the court costs. Uh, uh, criminal court clerk Mike Hammond helped join in on that. So people who had a lot of court costs was they could they could work that those those court costs off. Um, and we were really making headway, and we were actually going towards not just the folks that got in trouble, but like folks that maybe were um, hope scholarship or people who wanted to get some extra community service hours or uh, folks who were satisfying community service uh, uh, hours for a class, trying to recruit people to do it voluntarily, you know, not relying on people who are in trouble, but also making it like a community, a community service thing that's uh, kind of a, an option to give back to the community. And then COVID hit. So um, COVID wiped out all that, I, I'm, I'm, we're, we're finally getting back to where now everybody's going to be have an option to be vaccinated. So I'm going to probably in the next month be talking to everybody on the litter crew saying, look, we're, we're going back to probation model. So you need to be vaccinated. And if you're not vaccinated, that's fine. That's your choice. But we're going to be introducing people back into like sharing the, you know, getting in a van with you. So you may want to bear in mind that these folks may or may not be vaccinated. Um, kind of been taking that approach that workplace safety was paramount right now. So we're not letting people who are like kind of unknown walk in off the street and then ride along with folks. It's not so much the picking up of the litter, it's the riding along or checking in uh, in the morning with us. But um, once we're all vaccinated as a staff or everyone who's had an option to be vaccinated has either turned it down or uh, taken advantage of that. Uh, I look forward to start restarting as promptly and as robust as possible our, our you know, that probation thing. And also going after folks who are not in trouble, but they just want to do something to give back to the community. But in the meantime, we have five full-time staff and a couple part-time positions, a pool of part-time money. And uh, we're really, we're a little bit, 
under what we would like in terms of labor, but we definitely, you know, we weren't, we weren't at nothing. So having five full-time people every day uh, in some ways was better than having two or three people who were taking out probationers. Cause some of those days we'd have two or three people show up and we couldn't count on it. You, when you have five people showing up every day, uh, you know that they're going to be there. Um, that's, that's actually, I'd, I'd probably want to pursue keeping that model and then still having the probationers be kind of a cherry on top. Of that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think so. That, that is interesting. Um, and I, I, now that you say that, it makes sense with the COVID effect too. But um, yeah, it's, it's huge. It's, it's such an important part. I think, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm still amazed people throw trash out of the window in 2021, but <laughs> along the roads, it, it really makes such a big difference and appreciate you guys and all the effort. I know you don't have, you have very tight budgets and, and not enough people, um, Drew and, and Patience and Jay, all of you. I think, I think I'm sure on behalf of all the board, we, we appreciate all your effort there because it's a huge part of just keeping the city and, you know, the county and whatnot um, pretty and attractive and, and appreciate all the efforts. I could say um, for the city, we also, we have a, we have a different system, but uh, we were also taking folks out and that stopped because of COVID. Uh, we never got those um, TDOT funds in the first place. So there wasn't that change there for us, but due to COVID, um, the litter in, in the city has just been really out of hand. Um, and in recent um, weeks, public service folks have actually been going out and doing overtime on Saturdays to try and get it under control because it has gotten so bad this year. So it's, it's impacted the city as well. One like, kind of personal thing I'll add about that is it, it, we always, we take a lot of the calls and I may not take the call. We have several folks that answer the phone here um, at 311, they maybe take the call for the city, but there's always this weird kind of misplaced anger where people will call us and say, I am so mad about this. And like, they're mad at us as if we put the litter there. Uh, like, you know, trust me, if I, if I could throw five people at something, I would love it to not be litter on the side of the road. I, we didn't put the litter there. We're one of the fo few folks that actually have crews and staff and resources, you know, aimed at picking the litter off the side of the road. Um, litter is a community problem. Um, it's, 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 I don't know what the solution is. Uh, it's not just, but I guess what I was, where I'm going with that is us picking up the litter is not going to be the only solution. City or the county picking up the litter. There's adopter road groups. There's, you got to make a culture of litter being unacceptable in all, you know, people who see people litter need to tell people, hey man, you shouldn't litter or hey lady, you shouldn't litter. People shouldn't be throwing their cigarette butts out. It should be enforced. Judges should treat it like a real crime. Uh, it should be prosecuted. There's, to me, there's a, it's not just education. It's not just removal and abatement. It's, it's a, a whole of government or a whole of community approach is what's going to solve the litter problem. And, um, um, you know, it's, we have five people on the side that go out every day that, and they work really hard. Um, and I'm really proud of them. Um, but even if we doubled that, I, it's still going to be a problem and I don't know what will get us out of there, but uh, it'd be, it'd be really nice to, to not be having to focus our efforts to picking it up to focus on the prevention or the enforcement. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, uh, we, we probably should do more of that as a community or whatever, but anything I can do or any ideas definitely get that message out. That, that is a very good point. And it's, and it's, you know, in the heavier trafficked areas in the city, I go out in the city downtown quite a bit and, you know, I mean, there, there a lot of, a lot of people. So the more we can all band together or, or, or get that information, that message out, would, I think will, will help. One of the saddest things you can see is if you ever uh, go to IOMS and there was a guy, it used to be Jake Hudson, it's, it's been changed, I don't know who's doing it now, but they take a boat out every day. I think they actually have a contract in the city to do this. Yeah, they do. Just pick up litter that's that they can get. Like if you think about what you have as a strainer net, um, like mm -hmm. on a like what you would do, like if you're cleaning out a pool, uh, the small pieces actually they can't even get. 
they can only get the things that they can get in a strainer. So a cigarette butt may go through it, a little pieces of styrofoam, but like they get like the big chunks and just the amount of trash they pull out every single day. Mm-hmm. That's, that we didn't catch it. We had, didn't get it on the, uh, on the side of the road or when it blew out of someone's car or from an untarped load or someone threw it out and it did make its way into the stream and then the stream made its way into the, into the river. Uh, it's really sad to see the kind of stuff that they're pulling out of the river. And that stuff, once we don't get it in the river, it's going out, you know, to the, or it's actually going in our lake, then to the river, then the Mississippi and then to the Gulf. Uh, it's, it's really sad. Um, yeah. it's, it's a real environmental problem that uh, I don't know what the solution is. I'd like to be part of it and we can only be part of it, but it's, it's really sad how, how bad it is. I, I just have one comment, if that's okay. I, I think I heard somebody else though, so. Go, no, go for it, Jay. Yeah, so um, I'm also president of my neighborhood association and litter, like, oh man, I, I'm sure <laughs> all just deal with, like, so um, I, I Keep Knoxville Beautiful had just started something and I think they actually worked with you all, Drew, if I remember right, but they, they make these signs now. So um, that's, that's pretty- funded by- the Tennessee, that's our litter grant that indirectly, yeah. yes, we are indirectly paying for that, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought she had said that she worked with you all. Um, and then they've got like these really cool guides that they printed off for me too. So I'm, I mean, hopefully those don't end up as just being litter because uh, somebody doesn't pay attention to the, my flyers, but um, we've definitely put those up in the neighborhood, got a lot of support. I don't, I can't tell. I, I do an awful lot of litter pickup in my neighborhood, but I mean, really trying to enforce that on a neighborhood level. Um, I wish I had some enforcement capability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he's a litter cop, Drew. Can I, can that be my like assignment on this board? It's like, I, I don't know. Dude. It's possible you could be deputized as a uh, codes enforcement officer. Uh, and <laughs> go to the please. sheriff's, uh, I think the sheriff has some type of a citizen police academy. You could probably, um, you know, <laughs> sign up for and see what they what they would allow you to. Uh, I would love support. that power. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but that's a good point. Those that that sign. I knew that we'd approve that. that. I like that it how it mimics the. You see these signs like drive like your children live here. You see those in some of the neighborhoods, and that's a, another example of what you what you're putting out, or you know, at least brings awareness to other folks that you're you're kind of watching. Um, this is Kat. Uh, one, that's pretty cool, Jay. And um, I'll have to I'll have to check with with KAB about those signs because my my neighborhood has a very active um, litter pickup process, and particularly after we we do our big spring and fall cleanups. Man, there is you know, and everything is so beautiful and pristine, and and you know, you kind of feel proud of everybody for picking stuff up. There's just nothing worse than the feeling of seeing that driving past or walking past and seeing that that first, you know, fast food bag that someone's just pitched out the window or something. It's like, you know, it's just a sinking feeling in your stomach. Um, but a quick quick question um, on the the report, Drew. I did have a couple of uh, small editorial things. Uh, would you like those via email, or do you want to? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you can send them to me, and I'll either make the you know make the changes for you know Sunshine. It'd probably be better if you send it to me. Okay. Um, as opposed to the group, that way you're not deliberating on anything. And um, yeah. I would, no, they're, they're just little little grammatical things. Yeah. Um, but on, a, on a substantive matter, I will say that in, in terms of your of the responses to the the, the questions from TDAT, um, I, I just wanted to say um, I really appreciated them. I think you and the, the staff did a, a very, very nice job of, of providing some really thoughtful and constructive uh, responses there. Um, and and you know, some of the things I know that they, they've heard for year after year, uh, but um, they are very thoughtfully stated and, and I hope there's some progress on them. One would hope that they actually are reading the survey <laughs> questions they've asked for. Um, so, I mean, I was part of the committee that, that 
helped develop this re the, the the change in retrack and they talked about like well let's ask yearly on that's where they a lot of these things they auto populate so next year everything will auto populate that's like convenience centers and permit numbers and you know with it, but this will always go blank so like i, I don't have to re-enter the convenience center permit number or the telephone numbers or hours of operation or even like the city of Knoxville recycling locations i don't have to i just have to make sure they're correct but um in theory this was is was supposed to always be blank at the year and they would in theory also change these if they had something um that they but i, don't, I just don't know how much tdec actually reads it um uh it, but yes i would i would hope that they uh, some of those are responses to some of the things that patients and i've had experience with like hhw there was a loss of funding for the past two years and it was really unexpected and one might think that a, a permanent like permanent hhw facility um grant would have funding and it was always it was always described as it would be having permanent funding and then all of a sudden we we didn't have we lost funding in the middle of a funding cycle uh i say we the city actually is the, the grantee or a grant the grantee on that so um just asking for some asking them to to talk with us about priorities and be open and transparent the way we would be with anyone um, and, and i have always had this bugaboo uh, about um, collection everything that they do they focus on collection let's mandate collection let's require that there's this collection they don't really talk about the like if we build it if we invested in a certain type of plant that relied on this or manufacturing industry that relied on that, that that actually might focus on the demand side. I, I just wish they would focus on the demand than, 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 the, than, the, than, the, than the supply. Right. So they have it kind of build it and they'll, it'll, the way the legislation and the rules work is it's collected and then something will come based on the collection. Yeah. I, I just don't believe that. So. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll send you those few gr little grammatical things. Um, just before we move on from the annual report, um, I just wanted to highlight for the board something that Drew kind of um, alluded to, which is, um, you know, the, the class three, four stuff um, is counted as diversion, but uh, my little soapbox is that it, it really shouldn't be. Um, so though we are like checking that box and we're looking good according to the state standards, um, I think it's important that we kind of internally, at least at the city, we're, we're trying not to be complacent about it and we're trying, trying to divert more than we are. Yeah, one, I mean, really our, our recycling numbers, if you're, if you're looking at city recycling numbers as you know standard commodity recycling plus our leaf and brush, we look pretty good. But really when you focus in on city recycling numbers, they could be a lot higher than they are. So just so you're all aware, we're aware and we're, we're trying to do better. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like our, if you look at like the municipal collection, city and county, uh, and I'm not counting UT and municipal because they don't, but you know, it's, it's more like an 11% recycling rate. If you yeah. Total cash versus total recycling. And that, I mean, that's, that's not nothing. Uh, you're right. Well, one and, hole and in the I, ground is not necessarily that much better than another hole in the ground. It's still going in the ground and it could be a resource for the green economy. So I yep, agree. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I, it would be nice to have a, uh, a, I mean, unless you all want to talk about more, a vote to, to give again, to, on the, on the original question, uh, to give Nick the, or the chairperson, uh, the, uh, ability to sign off once we've made any of these changes that, like for example, the UT's corrections and anything that retract is changes in retract that TDEC sends us, as well as any uh, thing that CAT sends us for the grammatical corrections. Um, if you all wanted to kind of go ahead and vote on that, um, unless you have want to talk about it more, I'd be happy to talk about it. And, and do we, we already had a motion a second? Right, we yes, didn't have to do the vote. I was, I was going back to the um, the agenda, wherever it is. Gosh, sorry. Yeah, 
think did I motion and David seconded? Yeah, I think I yes. believe so. It was to authorize the regional solid waste board chair to sign off on the annual reporting as reported in retract. Yeah, there it is. I was trying to get back to it. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to driving the Zoom. I'm normally just the participant, so sorry. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, well, if we've got a motion and a second, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 That way motion passes. Okay. Um, I put after that municipal, municipal solid waste update, uh, I didn't actually send you all this. Uh, Patience, you have that list from that we sent. I sent you a note, like an email. Uh, oh, the municipal update? Yeah. yeah I just, I, I, to me, to, I, um, and I have a few things to add to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had, had you had mentioned glass. Uh, the one thing I was just going to brag on ourselves, city and county, is um, before we talk about HHW, is that um, city and county got together for a class one landfill contract. And huh. um, man, by putting the city and county together, basically the city led the, was in the driving seat for the bid process. We just signed, I think the, their procurement office um, took, the, took the lead, but it was always communicated in advance that whoever wins this bid is also getting the county's business. And our thing went from like 23 or $24 a ton down to 19.93 a ton for class one landfill. And so I mean, it's, it, over about a 10 year period, that's like a million dollar savings. It kind of got lost. We were there to, our, our, um, I was there to speak about that at the same agenda meeting when the, the whole board of health thing kind of bubbled up back in the late summer. So it kind of just, I think by the time we were speaking, it was one in the morning, but you know, that, act of co coordination or cooperation with the city and county got us both a better price per ton and uh you know for the county a, a ten a million dollars over 10 year savings uh and i was really just hoping to keep the cost steady i was hoping we'd just get you know 22 or 23 dollar you know to kind of keep the cost the same i wasn't expecting a three or four dollar reduction in in the total cost so i just wanted to brag about that, that that we need more of those type of things in the next mm. five years than, than, than like the HHW program losing funding, which is something I is a, more of a, a, a downside of thing to report. I don't know if patients you wanted to add anything about that. That's, that's just, terrific. Congratulations yeah. guys. That's awesome. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. Just that that was, uh, that was Drew's idea. So, um, thanks for that. It worked out really well. Um, then, so then, you know, even though we're going to save a million dollars over 10 years, we lost basically TDEC kind of pulled the fun plug on all grant funding. We have the, we always had this recycle rebate. Sometimes there were some other educational grants that we were going to be eligible for or equipment grants. Used or, oil. Used oil. They just didn't offer it for like two years. And the HHW, which there was a contract, kind of, they got, that kind of got all jammed up and then they did maybe extend it or add another year. But then this year, you know, are, it, have you all fully expended your yeah, so, grant? Yes, we have. So it was supposed to end last fiscal year. So last summer, uh, last June 30th, uh, we did get an extension on it all the way um, to December but that was only because of COVID, we had to shut the HHW down and there was one pickup that was gonna you know, be a little late. So we did get the extension until December, but really we had um, used up all those funds by the end of August or so. Um, and then, um, so, so no grant funding for the current fiscal year that we're in. And also it's become clear uh, because typically they put out grant offerings um, January and then they're due by the end of March that there will be no offerings for next fiscal year either. Um, and, and really it's not just us, it's any grants of any kind. They're not even offering rural counties, um, you know, recycling equipment, just the, even the bare bones funding that they used to give and offer. Um, there's, there isn't even used oil, which is really surprising to me because that's 
that that funding source is you know corporate dollars coming through them but um so yeah big change there it's like you know we have maybe some the way our funding works if uh, like we get money for tires and we're that money comes in and we're only allowed to use it for tires uh, i don't know how that works for the tdec for the state of tennessee's budgeting process so you know they had a solid waste fund my understanding is, is that fund got zeroed out and that's why they weren't able to offer grants again this is only what they tell us i have no mm -hmm. idea if they proposed the cut or if it was just something that came from the legislature but um it's it was abrupt and not explained and i just wish they had said hey just like, like back in march or back in february when we were doing our budget i couldn't get a single answer please I was just saying, please let us know, do you think there's going to be um, uh, any grants offered for the fiscal year? Because I could put that in a request, in our budget request, that maybe it's going to happen, maybe it's not. But they didn't even want to say, like, no. Like, I just thought it would be more clear to say, why don't you budget for no grants? Because that's what we're looking at right now. They wouldn't even do that, really. Um, and that was a little frustrating. Because um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not, it's all public record, record in theory is to ask them, how did you come up with these numbers? I mean, what did you propose? Did you propose grants or did you propose? So uh, that was a little bit frustrating. Um, so our HHW funding line item, for example, we would have asked for more in the anticipation, as the patient said, to have no funding coming in. Um, and recycle rebates, we always kind of counted on about anywhere from 20 to $50,000 to help offset some like capital equipment costs and those that's gone. In theory, it's gone unless you know something changes. Um, so, uh, who knows? Um, uh, they did. It, it, well, one positive side of that is that all of this kind of HH, this blowing up the HHW, the household hazardous waste funding, is the city and county did get back together and say, well, this agreement we have is dated back to like 1996. It just keeps getting renewed and renewed. So we re. Uh, we did redo the HHW contract to kind of clean it up and make it a little more clear that the city and county are sharing the costs, uh, or at least the lot last dollar cost. The city's going to like pursue any grants or any funding, or maybe if there's fees they could charge or whatever, they're going to do that. And then the city and county will split 50 50. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's not really a whole lot of substantive changes. I don't know if you want to add to that, patients, but we do have a newer version of an agreement. I don't think they're calling yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I'd say substantially the really the 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 real big thing was technically we should have been tracking before when materials were coming in, whether they were from city residents or county residents. And uh, that was just very cumbersome for the techs who work the HHW, not to mention some people aren't even quite sure. <laughs> um, and you can't even figure it out by zip code or there's there's no quick way to do it. So we cleaned that up. Um, and updated a few things, but um, yeah, just good to have a kind of refreshed, more accurate contract. Maybe this one will last another 20 years, so. Yeah. 2030. Um, I, for McCounty, you know, I had to mention we might update a litter or if there's any questions about tires. Um, we did, this was a big year for us. We redid um, all of our major contracts, whether it's hauling, disposal, um, um, the, the largest contracts we have, they were up this year, um, our goodwill at convenience centers. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, um, it was kind of a tough year with COVID and then all of the contracts being rebid. Uh, and then one thing we did change at least operationally for convenience centers is we always had this thing where convenience centers are open Monday through Friday, eight to six and Saturday, seven to three. The only day we're closed is Sunday. And, even the days were open, it's, it's a full day. And so we, COVID really exposed that when we were really busy, we were, had no downtime and we were breaking down left and right, having equipment failures and our people were getting really burned out. So this year, back in November, we made a new schedule for holiday. It's not just holidays. Uh, every, once a quarter, we're gonna shut down completely on a Wednesday. So it, we just had that on March the either 15th or 17th. And then June, then September and then December, that's gonna give us one day every quarter to train staff or deep clean convenience centers, do some deep inspections. Uh, so that's, that's kind of changed. Um, and we did it on our least busy day, which is Wednesdays. Uh, we had a few complaints, but 
again, since it was our least busy day, it, it, it seemed to go over well. And, and everybody went out and busted it really clean, really thoroughly cleaned two centers and inspected it. And we're going to do that. Seven centers, we do two or three uh, every time. We'll be able to do that. And on our winter meeting, we're going to use those for – there's some things we do every year, like Title VI, all staff has to be trained on Title VI, like civil rights legislation. Uh, and then TDEC requires us to do – everybody who works at a convenience center should, in theory, undergo some type of management of a convenience center training. They call it suit training. Um, they have a train-the-trainer model. So Dave, Zach, and myself have all completed the TDEC training and they allow us to decide what of that is really relevant to our staff who actually operate the centers but we are supposed to have a all staff training with them so we're going to be doing that in December like December 15th I think this will be this year uh, so we'll be shutting down to do that um, so that's that's kind of our big main operational thing we already talked about litter um, um, that's that's it from us I don't know patients do you have other yeah, just a, just kind of a few updates, you know, um, so many things, so many little projects and things have been put on hold because of COVID. So just some changes over the last year that we saw due to COVID. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the household hazardous waste facility was closed for a while. I think it was a total of maybe six weeks. Um, and that is really one of our most like high contact interactions at the transfer station. So that's why that part was closed down. Uh, we also, the transfer station was closed on Saturdays for about two months, two, two and a half months. Uh, we stopped taking cash at the transfer station. Um, and really we got so few complaints and it's so much easier and more straightforward and really um, liability wise better without cash. So we're gonna be sticking with that going forward at the transfer station. Um, in terms of kind of what we already touched on earlier, you know, changes in waste due to COVID, we've seen just an explosion of cardboard, um, especially at our centers. Um, we're really struggling with our Park Village Center out west. Um, and that's really just a huge combination of things. I mean, one, building and construction out west is, there's so much out there. Um, we've tried to add another recycling center to help out with that, but you know, there's, there's nothing in Farragut, the County, of course, there's Dutchtown out there, but really we're taking in the cardboard at that center for just a really large population. Um, so we're, we're trying to manage that, but with, you know, more and more online ordering and then everybody being at home, that's, that's been an issue, um, at our centers, but also curbside. Um, so we're we've kind of been struggling to keep up with that, but um, doing our best there. Um, and then just, you know, this year in general for curbside collection has been a challenge. Um, you know, uh, Waste Connections with whom we contract to do the hauling from the curbside and they had a bunch of guys down out sick with COVID and um, guys running other guys routes and, um, you know, that influx in trash, like Drew mentioned, when people are at home and putting their you know, they're take out garbage in there instead of eating out at a restaurant. So um, it's been a rough year, but um, I think we're all feeling like we're, you know, headed, headed out, out of the tunnel at this point. Um, one other thing to add, kind of an update is just our recycling centers in general. We're, um, we're revamping them a little bit. We've got some new stickers um, that were really based on Jay's stickers over at UT, we kind of had um, the idea, and I think Drew and the county is also interested in this, and just kind of um, making our information a little bit more um, cohesive with the three partners, you know, UT and, and the county and the city. So we tried to model our stickers off of Jay's. And um, so we're in the process of, um, you know, repainting and fixing a bunch of our roll-offs and restickering. Um, we just put up message boards um, at our recycling centers because we feel like people are really, um, I think, you know, there's recycling has been in the news so much in the last couple of years since China stopped taking a lot of our recycling. So I think people are asking deeper questions about, um, you know, just really how recycling works. Um, and so we're trying to get that kind of um, level of information out to the public as well. 
And then one final piece of that is we have a new tool on our website where people can go and look up a specific um, item to see whether it's recyclable or not. Um, and so, you know, I think the word is getting out about that. So, um, but that's, that's about all we have in terms of kind of new newsy things happening this year. I'd like to, yeah, I would say we do have um, the source files. I don't know if we got the ones from UT or from, I think we have the cities. Uh, I think we give you ours um, and. So we'll probably preserve the format, but then change it slightly, maybe reword it. Uh -huh. or, um, uh -huh. Maybe even change and the I, colors, but still have it be this similar. Similar, and I should get you some more too now because we now also have the Spanish versions that we're putting up at all the centers as well. Yeah, we we need to probably do the the key that you mentioned there is like maybe sanding and painting, even yeah. a, quick, a, a, a quick cheap paint job may be the thing that's needed first. So we haven't focused on the stickering yet. We're we're trying to get everything. I have this goal of in the next two or three years to actually replace all of our, if not replace, refurbish all of our waste and recycling equipment just to make them look good. If you look at our centers, a lot of the equipment is is, is either rusty or like just faded mm -hmm. um you know it's a it's a lot of a lot of equipment it's very expensive equipment mm -hmm. even just it's also quite expensive just just even paint those things um or, right or refurbish them so we're mm -hmm. trying to focus on the op keeping them working then making them look good and then putting the messaging on because most people who use centers are using it on a repetitive basis and we're not having a whole lot of problem with contamination and we have mm -hmm. a person there at all times who's paid to kind of inform folks. So we're probably gonna focus on the messaging last, uh, even though it's the one I would want to focus on most, I, I gotta focus on the other things, the nuts and bolts first, but. Uh, um, hey, uh, hey, Patience or Drew, yeah. what's the status of glass recycling right now? Are they getting any money for the glass? Oh, no. So the glass situation is that um, they're still taking it down um, at Strategic Glass in Atlanta. Uh, that's actually of all the materials that we collect, that is the material that's going the furthest. Hmm. Um, and there is some, still some environmental benefit when it's going that far. If it were going a few more hundred miles, I think there wouldn't be any more, but um, yeah, West Rock is still taking the city of Knoxville's glass from the recycling centers, but that really is the only place that you can recycle glass anywhere anymore. Again, when that when that glass was in the bins, of course, and it went through the sorting line, it's such a garbage product when it came out the other end um, and it was contaminating the other materials and um, it was really hard on the machinery. So, you know, of course we had to take that out several years ago, but yeah, we were, I think, I mean, we were sure. under contract with West Rock for them to take our glass for longer than anybody. So we were able to kind of hold on. And I think at these reduced levels, um, they're able to manage it. It's, it's, I think, difficult and not very safe, of course, for them to manage it. Um, so they are still doing it for us and we actually subsidize um, them to do so at $30 a ton. Um, so, and we're good to keep collecting that glass at least through this November. It's kind of on a year by year basis and it renews every November. So, but they haven't indicated that they wanna take it out this year. So I think we're kind of holding, holding strong there. Um, I will say too, that I've been in conversation with Blunt County um, they bought a glass crusher with an EPA grant that they received um, and they're, they have the crusher, they're ready to go. Um, things really slowed down, of course, due to COVID like everything else, but they're going to be kind of revving that up in the coming months and they have expressed um, a willingness to possibly take glass from other um, you know, other folks, depending on, you know, how much they have, how much they need, they're going to, they do their own road projects. So they're going to use it in their own road projects and sort of like when they're burying pipes and, and whatnot. Um, so they can use it themselves. They have that, 
that second use for it. So I guess technically it's not recycling, it's downcycling, but um, so it's different for the city of Knoxville. I don't think we would ever look at doing something similar just because we don't do that kind, those kinds of projects for ourselves. Um, but in any case, that's kind of in the back of my mind, our plan B in case West Rock ever decides that they don't want to take it from us anymore. So they're using broken glasses bedding material for pipes? Yes, because you turn, can, huh, you can crush it down to, it's really a, like a sand. You could stick your hand yeah. in it. You can use it at playgrounds. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. really um, versatile. Okay. It's even sand colored. You take the green and the brown and the clear and you mush that up into fragments. It actually has a sandy, sandy color. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where if, if they actually ramp up and they start, they have a demand for it, we would consider adding it back at convenience centers. Um, one thing I would say, and I'm just, I'm ballparking this. I remember looking at the numbers. It's like when we, if, if we had a certain amount of tonnage and the city had a certain amount of tonnage, they were almost about the same amount that the city and the county was collecting in terms of glass. When we mm -hmm. were told by West Rock that they would not accept that anymore and we got rid of that collection, it, the city's numbers actually went up, even though ours, they didn't, they didn't, right. didn't all go to the city, but a, maybe a, 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 a portion the folks who are dedicated recyclers that use convenience centers kind of shifted their patterns to go to the city of Knoxville. Um, mm -hmm. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So, um, you know, that's for, you know, that's thank you to the city for continuing that collection. Um, it's also been, a, you know, when people are, are frustrated and they're like, I collected this, what am I going to do with it? We could still mm -hmm. say, well, you, you have this option of taking this other public uh, collection location. But we would consider reinstating that if we had a, actually, if West Rock were to say, we want to take it from you again, we would consider going back to them, even at a fee. Uh, I don't know what the, what the amount would be that we would be too much for us to mm -hmm. pay. But uh, we, we have paid in the past. At, at, the, at the worst we ever paid, I think we were paying, we were subsidizing it at like $50 a ton. And that was mm -hmm. several years ago, but at one point in time, we paid 50 bucks a ton to, to recycle glass. And, um, it wasn't, it wasn't so much, we had it in the budget to, to do that. It wasn't, it wasn't a deal breaker for us, but, uh, I, I like the idea of taking it locally for something yeah. to be used. Yeah. Um, it goes back to my thing is if there's a demand somewhere, like let's support that demand. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we await more information, but I agree with you. If it doesn't have to travel as far, um, you know, it, it, and it, it is being downcycled, but I, I would feel better about it, environmentally speaking. Um, and I, we're not sure if there would be a cost associated with it or not. I don't, because they're not sure. But, um, and then, you know, ideally, it's like, could we... Could we build that into future RFPs with folks who are doing work on our streets and, um, you know, that they need to use a certain percentage of, you know, post-consumer glass or, you know, I don't know, kind of get that, uh, that, that loop going. Yeah. yeah that'd be awesome. Um, it, yeah. It, right now it's a, it's a state law from what I understand, right? I could be misspeaking there, but no, um, you're right about that, the road, about asphalt. That, yeah, that's why the county can, you know, actually Knox County could do it on their own roads if they wanted to, but like anytime it's uh, like a gravel road or something like that, I mm -hmm. think that's my understanding too. I, I think, Jay, I think there's a little bit of a, there, there is a TDOT, there's like a, I forget what it's called. It's like the, there's a manual for the roads and everything that's built with state money has to be built according to that manual. And, and so if, if they allow it, then that's allowed. If it's not, I, I remember that was an issue with tires. They wanted to inc include tires mm -hmm. in asphalt. And it's like, uh, this was during the Rohara's administration. She was, could do it on like the city streets if she wanted to inc include that if the asphalt folks would do it because they were not being paid for by this. Like, so they, and they even looked at like, we'd rather do it in parking lots not streets because streets have to be built according to some kind of standard. And um, mm -hmm. so I, I think there's a few more state kind of 
I don't know what you would call it, uh, requirements that have to be met that either prohibit or don't let you do it unless it's kind of past their standard or their test that, that may prevent some of that. Um, and then in a larger perspective, there's some laws on the books with tires I'm aware of that actually say that no one can force the state cannot like TDOT cannot force the use of, of tires in asphalt. That's actually on the books. There's some law in there that says that they're not allowed to force it. They can like encourage it, but they can't force it. So, um, yeah. There's a the regulars, the regulation side of things are a little more complex. It's, it's a lot better to build parking lots and uh, things that aren't held to a standard for like public safety. Yeah. But we, patients, if, if you have that conversation again with uh, Blunt County, definitely, I mean, we're a small fraction of what you all do. I think if I recall, it was like 45, 45 and 10% of what mm -hmm. the West Rock was taking and glass came from us, but yeah, 50 and 10 or something, it was it, pretty close to that. So yeah, but we would be, I mean, we have a container and you know, we it, mm -hmm. it was a huge draw to our public drop off, which is tiny again, compared to mm -hmm. yours. Um, they also cut off Oak Ridge, and this is not uh, not not just Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge and um, Anderson County. So yeah. when they changed that, and they told they gave sent us our letter. You're not going. We're not taking your glass. I got a call. One of the first calls I got was from Jeff Trabalka at Anderson County. It says, "Hey, what are y'all doing about glass? I just got a letter that says they're not going to take our glass anymore." And, you know, but like Jay, you got the letter. UT got the letter. County got the letter. Maybe even the city got some kind of notification, which they were because they are in a different relationship, we're able to maybe, on the timing of the contract renewal, we're able to secure <laughs> continuance. Uh, we were just in the middle of a rebid. So they were just mm -hmm. like, no, we're not taking it. Um, so, um, yeah. But we weren't the only, this UT and the county were not the only folks that lost that collection. Yeah, I mean, everybody lost, Blunt, I think, used to take their glass there. I mean, every, count, every surrounding county lost it. I'm all for it. Blunt County can make something large enough to, to grind up our glass. They could, they could definitely have some free material because it would save us, you know, that $20 a ton, even if it's not paying, you know, it is, even if it was, even if it was less than, if it was like $18, it would be cheaper than sending it to the landfill. Right. So uh, you'd have to account mm -hmm. for the, the transportation, but as long as it's cheaper than the 1993 per ton landfill fee, it's still going to be a better deal for us, even if it was sitting into Blunt County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ditto. Our, yeah. our, our disposal is twenty two fifty a ton. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, anything less than that, I'm good. But anything more than that, I don't think I could swing it. So, that's mm -hmm. probably our calculus. If if it costs more than to throw it away, then to throw it away, we probably you know it's quite got a question: Is that the effective um, use of tax dollars? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll keep you guys in the loop. I have a just a random question, uh, sort of related to that, or, or especially when talking about uh, surrounding counties partnering. You know, Sevierville had uh, had gone to like a zero waste uh, policy. You know, I can't remember a few years ago we talked about that, and and they. We had actually even looked at this in Knox County in the city and trying to share some resources years ago with a, uh, a gasifier. Max West was one of the companies that I think Sevierville actually implemented. But do you know, have you heard much from those guys, how that's proceeding or how that, that worked out? I know it's it's probably a couple years in maybe now. I have a lot of personal thoughts about the <laughs> But let me tell you what I, I feel comfortable saying is that um, it's, the it, it goes back to that what is not going into a class one landfill versus like what's happened to it right so it's definitely not going in into their class one landfill so in that aspect they do have nearly a hundred percent or like a 99 percent diversion rate but i you know where that stuff goes and what it turns into and what's it's comprised of if you if you have the end product from the other from the other side what the output of that digester um you know, I, I don't know how much of a marketable, usable material that that makes. Uh, I think they actually struggle to find a market for it. And, um, 
you know, uh, from that aspect, I might, I might be more in favor of like a pyrolysis model because at least that kind of com- combusts and, and consumes some of the, the yep. stuff. I, well, that's what I thought that's what they were doing. Is that not it? I would think of it as like, what I think of it is like, um, they have the inside, the in where they put it in, they put it in one side as like compactors and it's a large tube, like the size of a solid rocket bo- booster or like for the space shuttle or like one of these rockets. And it, it takes like three days to go from one end to the other end. And in the meantime, it, it is digested just like we would digest food. There's enzymes and there's like mechanical processes at play. And on the other end, it comes out in very fine pieces. So everything that goes in, you know, garden hoses, trash bags, baby diapers, chicken trash, kitchen trash, aluminum can. On the other side, the thing that they can recover in solid pieces are like, they have these things, they actually call them hairballs. And that might be like a garden hose wrapped with some pieces of metal wire. And like, that's the kind of stuff that they end up, maybe they put it back through. But a lot of it is they, they can sort through this, this fine mesh and it's, it's become, they call them the fines. Hey, Drew. I had something. Exact same. Thing. I think they were going to add a, a gasification process to the mulch after the fact. Yes. I, I have not heard anything about that. Yeah, I don't know. After, okay. But after that, it, it, it kind of spits out what, what, for lack of a better term, they, they sometimes call it a compost mulch. But what's left over is this really fine particulate stuff. You can look at it and it actually, if you're holding it in sunlight, it, it glistens because even the glass gets turned into sand. Um, if you looked at that under a microscope, you'd see very small pieces, plastic, sand, wood, you know, everything that goes in gets, gets reduced in shape, in, in size. And then they put it, you know, I don't know exactly where they put it, but um, I think that that's a big generator of microplastics because that plastic doesn't go away. It just gets smaller. Sure. Um, They're also using it for daily cover on the landfill, which I think is counted as diversion, but. Okay. (laughs) Well, and I may, I guess that that was early on because I was under the impression that they had already or were, were, full scale implementing the, the gasifier, which is like paralysis, like you're saying, which which would be more what we looked at because then you would actually get an energy uh-huh. component and then uh, obviously there's a cost to it, but uh, but the, the volume reduction is is something ridiculous, like 99% volume reduction. So even though the, the ultimate waste material may still go to landfill, it's a, it's a massive, you know, um, uh, reduction and, and conversion and, and all that tonnage, uh, but, Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I was just curious. I was, I was thinking, yeah, with Knox County and Blunt and Anderson and several <laughs> that might, that might potentially uh, sign on and partner there, there could probably be a lot of economy of scale, but as we all know, that's mm-hmm. the, the devils in the details, getting a bunch of parties to, mm-hmm. to, uh, to agree there, but that would be interesting. I yeah, haven't know, heard about that gasification component, though. It sounds like Zach, you did, but I ha- I had not well, heard this it. Was a, this was a couple of years they were just starting to try to implement it. And I don't I haven't heard anything, so I don't I don't mm-hmm. know if that means it wasn't successful. I, I don't I haven't heard anything more about it. I think they were trying to pull aluminum cans out of the mulch and and clean them up because at the time once it went through that mulch the can they couldn't use the cans i think there's a bunch of different components of it i think they have recovered the metal and the metal goes to a a, a scrap metal recycler and i I would just say one of the big differences is why that is you know if you're if you're severe county solid waste and you're 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 just surrounded by a mountain um and you have this very little space for a landfill you know Imagine they had to drive it to, to Anderson County. Like we, you know, our stuff goes either to Anderson County or to, uh, I say our stuff, the, the waste, yeah. from, all waste from Knox County predominantly goes either down to Athens or up to Anderson County to Chestnut Ridge. And um, if you got to imagine your Sevier County and you collect waste, you've got to then, not, you got to pay a disposal fee plus the transport to get it far away. Mm-hmm. It doesn't probably make financial sense for their model to, as you say, reduce in size. Um, but I also, I also think like it would make sense to do what they've done, reduce it in size and then still landfill that material. Cause um, I just don't know what that last step, the material that comes out in, I don't know exactly what they do, whether they do pyrolysis or not, but, um, or some gasification, but 
I think it would still make financial sense if after they've done that, they still had to landfill it and pay to transport the landfill somewhere else. It would still probably make financial sense given their, like the constraints they have on land and the ability to construct a, a class one landfill. That they may end up doing that, you know, if things were to change um, with the way, the way that works. But um, where we have, we had com competitive solicitation uh, we had Chestnut Ridge and the Waste Connection uh, landfill in, in Athens, Tennessee, bidding on on our material. You know, we got this pretty favorable cost, and um, the the dis the transport. You know, we were we weren't able to transport that to a location here in Knox County into a transfer station, where then Waste Connections transports it down. Or if you're a, in business and you or your UT or your um, a construction company. You want to get rid of either demolition or class one waste you got a landfill close by the drive time the transport time is pretty pretty minimal if you're either using waste connections or waste management land landfill um, so that's different if you're a waste company in Sevier county it's just it's a farther draw drive to get rid of the trash Mm -hmm. Just one other thought on that too. And, and I mean, I honestly hadn't even considered that piece of it. The one I've always focused on with Sevier County is demographics. You know, you've got 50,000 residents in the county, but you've got 15 million visitors a year. Yeah. And it's mostly food waste, right? Like a similar model wouldn't make any sense in Knox County because a, such a smaller portion of it would be stuff that would break down in a digester process right so yeah it's it's fascinating technology i i would uh i think at one point we had even talked about trying to make a, a kind of field trip for the board i think that'd still be a valid thing to do i you know if we have the time i, I would love to set that up and have us all go um and we'd have to you know sunshine that and all that all that but it's it'd be a just seeing how they do it, it's still worth it um, um, because it's a fascinating technology and it is very, it's like a one of its own. I, there may be one or one other place where it's done, but it's definitely a very unique disposal system they have there. Um, and uh, they've always been willing to set up tours, but if, if we can't set up a tour, it would be, you know, useful. I'm, I think they're willing to give tours to anyone off the street too. If you, if you email them and ask, ask for that, they're, they're not, you know, they're proud of it. So uh, it's worth a look. Could I also offer a, a similar yeah. uh, tour offer for the University of Tennessee's composting facility as well? So I would love to take the board out or anybody really. We're, we're open for tours anytime too. So come check out an industrial composting facility right here in Knoxville. So. Only thing left on the agenda is an adjournment if you all wanted to make a, oh, sorry, sorry, oops, Ch chairperson. <laughs> um, uh, I always keep that in there because we had uh, Dirk, poor Dirk Pullman, he was the chairperson for like 10 years straight. No one, uh, it was like, it wasn't even a question on the agenda whether or not to have a new person. Um, but uh, I don't know if you all would like to potentially change that if Nick you're getting tired of it or um, uh, or if you all have any related to this if you had questions about the board itself role of the board I could also answer any questions so just uh, do you all have any thoughts or want to make any changes or Nick are you still willing to serve yeah I am it's it's fine if uh, if, if no one uh is as an itch but if, if someone does i'm certainly agnostic or, or don't mind being in another role too it's what um i, I would just leave it to the board or, or everyone else so yeah i'm, I'm fine to, to stay if there's no interest <laughs> but they're certainly open to it for sure if there is as well do you have any any of y'all have any questions related to the role of the board or anything that would be, um, I mean, I, I know Ronnie, you're, you're coming on. I, I'd say this is the, as far as TDEC concerns, this is the primary role is this yearly review of what we're reporting and retract just to have some level of review that we're, you know, to catch things like an error in the UT's numbers. 
um, and, and my grammatical mis mistakes for the survey. But um, there is some minor role on the uh, permit thing. I don't know if you all wanted any kind of clarification on that or, uh, or, or, or whatnot. Uh, also, Ronnie, I'd be happy to speak with you if he's still here. He may not even be with us anymore. Um, yeah, he is. Um, if, you, off, if any of you individually has any questions, I'd be happy to speak with you about historical role of the board. Uh, there's a whole document that TDEC has given us that they made the, back in 2011 called the role of the regional solid waste board in Tennessee. I, I will share that with, with Ronnie and I, I think I've given you all a copy, if not electronic, uh, either a paper copy of it. But um, if you have any questions, I'd be able to speak to it now. That being said, that last thing is the adjournment. So, um, I don't know, unless you all have any, anyone wants to bring up new business, the last thing on that agenda was the, the adjournment. So, uh, like a motion might be worthwhile there. Uh, this is Jay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. So Jay is making the motion, Kim Davis. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Have a have a good uh, happy Friday and good weekend. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And to you. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Hey, Drew. Yes.